Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are at in the world. We do thank you for tuning in to today's show. Today is Wednesday, March 30th, 2016, and this is Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Home Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. Today, it is just me, myself, and I, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector, and if you'd like to explore and discover more about my spiritual work or my spiritual practice here in Seattle, Washington, you can go online right now to marklanehart.com, or you can just do an internet search on the Intuitive Prospector. I would love to work with you. I do have uh, my first spiritual hike uh, of the season coming up here in Seattle, Washington, in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. If you've never hiked in the Pacific Northwest, you'll want to come out and do this hike. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be up in the Cascade Mountains. It's going to be on Saturday, April 16th from uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we do provide transportation. We also are going to be going to a place called Franklin Falls. So there will be lunch provided, a guided meditation at the base of the waterfall, and we're going to be out in nature. So what's not to like? I do have a few new uh, events uh, coming up as well uh, in the next few months. Just wanted to get those out there in case you find yourself in Spokane, Washington. On Sunday, June 12th, I'm going to be having my Spiritual Borders workshop uh, along with uh, some spirit circles if you were looking to connect with a loved one. Again, that's uh, June 12th in Spokane, Washington. And then on Saturday, July 16th, we're going to be holding our first joint workshop with Kim Thalkin and myself, uh, the Spiritual Borders Workshop. And that's going to be down in Sherman Oaks, California at the Almond Garden Bookstore. Um, you'll want to get your seat reserved. Uh, space is limited for that workshop. And then Saturday, July 23rd, I will be at the BECU Conscious Wellness Expo in uh, Kent, Washington. So today, because I'm doing a solo show, uh, I would like to give a big IRL shout out to my awesome friend and co-host, Kim Falcon, who was on a much needed uh, vacation with her family uh, for the next few weeks. So it's going to be uh, me riding solo here to for this show Wednesday and then next show, uh, next Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss that show. That's going to be uh, uh, New York bestselling author uh, Deborah King on next Wednesday. Uh, but Kim, we just wanted to give you a big shout out. Uh, be safe as you travel. Uh, have fun, relax, soak up some of that sum. Give Mickey a big hug for me and enjoy those uh, cocktails with all the fruit and, and uh, pretty little umbrellas that come in it. So if you want to find out more about the beautiful work Kim is doing, working for Spirit, you can visit her online at lovefirst.info or you can go through any of the Inspired Living social media pages to find any of our links at marklanehart.com or Kim Falcon at lovefirst.info. So today's show, this is we're doing something I've never done before. We thought it'd be fun to open up our Skype lines, or if you want to interact with the show and call in, uh, just you're gonna want to go over to our Facebook page, which is Inspired Living Radio. I've gone ahead and put a post out there. You'll want to private message me with your phone number or your Skype profile, and I may just give you a call here in the next hour because we're going to be talking about uh, spiritual signs, symbols, and synchronicities. Uh, I'm looking for people's stories. Their interaction with spirit. I have interactions uh, pretty much every day of my life now with spirit because I'm uh, open and aware to what's going on. And so I'll be sharing those stories and some things to look uh, for as spirit is interacting in our lives. So uh, the social media pages that we have that you can interact live right now, Inspired Living Radio on Facebook, 
We're also on Twitter at Inspired For Us. That is the number four, Inspired For Us. We're also on Instagram under Inspired For Us. And we are also on Google Plus Communities under Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. I want to let you know if you do miss today's live show, we always have our encore on-demand shows. Uh, We're now featured on iTunes. We're also over on YouTube, and of course, you can always go to Ohm Times Archives. If you made it this far, it's just one more click over to the archives, and you can catch all of our 34-plus uh, shows that we've done since 2015. And then we're also available on Podbean, SoundCloud, and MarkLaneHart.com. So I, I do also want to mention that we are a growing show. We are we have a growing audience worldwide, and if you are interested in uh, joining the uh, Inspired Living Radio team as a sponsor, we are now officially accepting sponsorship for this radio show. Uh, if you want more information, please contact myself or Kim directly, and we can send that information out. But it's a, it's a great show to be a part of and getting people back on the path of being inspired. So uh, speaking of being uh, inspired, we want to uh, talk about our positive affirmation for the month of March. It is uh, it's two days away from April, so this will be our last uh, uh, affirmation for the month of March. And the Inspired Living Positive Affirmation is a positive thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. I'll just say that one more time. A positive thinker sees the invisible feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. And that is our Inspired Living Positive Affirmation for the month of March. So today's show, we're going to be talking about symbols, synchronicities, signs, everything that the spirit world has for us. And it actually becomes quite comical once you start to awaken or you start to fine-tune your awareness to how many uh, interactions the spirit world, even very subtle, um, that they have with us. So I'm going to be giving some tips, and um, if we get somebody that does want to call in, I did have a couple people scheduled, but I think uh, being on the radio made them a little nervous, so they have they've uh, backed out. But that's okay. So we'll just be uh, doing a teaching show today, and Kim and I talked. We thought it would be. Um, Fun and inspiring to also be able to teach. We both love teaching. Uh, it's one of my first loves is actually teaching, whether it's metaphysical workshops, working with people in spirit, or teaching in the medical um, field as well. So today's show, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. If you have questions and you want to interact on Facebook, uh, just head over there, ask us a question. Um, I did get a question that has popped up, so I'll bring that to air here in just a little bit. And um, looks like Thelma wants to know something about strange things happening around uh, her with birds. So we'll, we'll uh, explore that. Um, but again, thanks for listening for today's show. And one of the things I wanted to start off with, there was actually um, for this next 45 minutes or so, there was actually a quote that caught my eye, and I thought it would be um, fun to start off this topic of spiritual signs, symbols, and synchronicities that we all experience uh, if we're open to it. And it's from Charlie Chaplin. Uh, Charlie Chaplin is somebody that I have much admired and um, went to the Broadway play um, and just have always had a fascination with Charlie Chaplin, his life and what he went through, and, and very intuitive, uh, empathic um, actor, director, and um, what caught my eye today, talking about synchronicities, is he's got a quote that says, "We think too much and we feel too little." And that's so very much true in today's society that we're always thinking, we're always in the uh, the left uh, side of our brain, which is our analytical thinking mind, and we don't take a moment to stop and smell the roses uh, or smell the coffee. And a lot of times, with our interactions with spirit. That is actually where they'll come through is when we are in meditation, through silence, when we're actually feeling something. Uh, that's why movies and music are so powerful is because we can feel the expression. We can feel the emotions that are coming through to us. Uh, but the quote by Charlie Chaplin um, is we think too much and we feel too little. I thought that would be a great way to uh, start off uh, today's show. So real quick, I'm going to just jump to um, Thelma's question because 
uh, why not? It's kind of an open format show, something we've never done before, and we're going to just kind of be improv in the entire hour. So again, if you have questions and you want to interact with me uh, right now, head on over to Inspired Living Radio on Facebook. It is just me, so I am trying to bounce back and forth, both producing the show, talking to you here live on the air, and going to the Facebook page to see if there are any questions uh, that you would like me to answer or uh, look into. So uh, Thelma is saying that she has... I have witnessed a few separate times now a crow attacking a small bird. I have jumped out of a car in the middle of the road, ran out of the house throwing shoes, anything I can do to help the little birds. Why am I seeing this and what does it mean? Well, I know that the crows – I'm not a bird expert here, but I know that crows are uh, of the spirit world. Um, They are – a lot of times you've heard the story of don't kill a crow, uh, don't mess with a crow because then they all start showing up. So a very intuitive bird. Um, We too, Thelma, have seen crows in our neighborhood um, actually – uh, getting uh, pretty aggressive either with um, another bird or uh, grabbing a, a mouse. We actually saw that uh, just a month ago when we were walking in Lincoln Park here um, in our new house here in West Seattle. And we actually saw a crow pick up and play with this mouse, and my, my wife was very disturbed by that. Um, as far as why you're seeing that, I would actually recommend um, to look up um, what the crow means, you can go online and do that, or you can. Uh, what I would recommend is a former guest we on the sh- on the show, Dr. Stephen Farmer. He wrote a book called Animal Spirit Guides, and a lot of times that information um, you can look that up and see what that means. Because it's obviously if you keep seeing this and this crow keeps showing up, um, the synchronicities. There's definitely uh, a message, uh, so I would definitely explore that. So we're gonna go to our first break here. And uh, when we come back here in two minutes, uh, we're going to pick up where we left off talking all about signs, symbols, and synchronicities and how the spirit world uh, plays a part in our life every single day. So stick around. We'll be back in two. This is Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the the inspired inspired and the inspiration. inspiration. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L O V E F I R S T.info for more information. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs-Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Ohm Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. 
Free your mind with Om Times Radio. I Om FM. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times. Uh, we, before we went to break, we were talking about um, the crow. And actually uh, what I did is I looked that up. Just I was kind of curious myself to see what the crow actually means. And again, a great book by uh, Dr. Stephen Farmer uh, called The Animal Spirit Guys because you know one of the, the big things that uh, spirit does when they interact with us is through animals. It is through nature. I just had an interaction just yesterday with a ladybug and I was aware to it and it actually – I was opening my gate and the lady, ladybug was li- literally right there where I would notice it right at, at my eye level. So I looked up ladybug just to see what that meaning was. And again, there are a lot of references, but I personally um, would recommend Dr. Stephen Farmer's book. Uh, and being that he's been a guest on the show, really um, awesome guy and really knows a lot about uh, the animal world. But um, the crow, if it shows up, what that means is that you're on the verge of manifesting uh, something that you've been on, working on uh, towards a while. So um, if you see a, a crow beating up another bird, uh, good for you for getting out and, and trying to get that crow off the other bird because all life is precious. Uh, but it's also letting you know that the spirit world is, is saying, hey, something you've been working on uh, is starting to manifest and you've been doing this for a while. It's also saying to be watchful over the next couple of days for any uh, clear omens or signs uh, that will guide Guide you and teach you, and expect a, a very big change that's uh, coming soon uh, your way. So that's what the crow means. So I'm getting a few questions here as well. Uh, I do want to get into some of the uh, substance of the show as far as uh, this is a teaching show today. Uh, We usually have guests on uh, every single Wednesday, what we call Wisdom Wednesday. But we thought it would be kind of cool to once in a while just change up the format and uh, teach. And I do want to let the inspired listeners know uh, that we have some pretty fantastic guests coming up in the month of April. Uh, Like I said, next week it will be myself and uh, we're bringing on special guest Deborah King. Uh, She is an author, teacher, healer, radio show host. You're not going to want to miss that show. Um, We're also going to have Dr. Barbara DeAngelis, um, who I had the privilege of meeting at the You Can Do It uh, conference here in Seattle. She actually gave me her book, Soul Shifts. We're going to be talking um, to her about how the soul, the soul shifts. Um, fantastic teacher. Uh, she's part of um, – she's been doing this work for many years and part of the inner circle of um, the late Dr. Um, Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra. And then uh, I'll be actually heading out on vacation to uh, Mexico, and Kim will be riding solo. But we're going to also have the uh, international um, famous psychic medium Paul Jacobs, uh, spiritual medium from the UK. And so, you know, the month of April is going to be a fantastic month for tuning in to Inspired Living Radio, Wisdom Wednesday, and learning a lot of good stuff with some uh, big time leaders in the um, higher conscious realm. The spirit world, uh, higher thinking, so you'll you'll not want to miss that. So what I like to tell people when I'm teaching about uh, signs and symbols and synchronicities, and for those of you that have submitted questions, thank you so much. Uh, We do appreciate it. I will get to those throughout the show, so uh, be patient with me. Like I said, I'm bouncing back and forth here. But what I like to do is the first thing is awareness and how do spiritual signs and symbols and synchronicities come through. And I, I always ask my students, are we paying attention in life? Um, you know, are we, whether you, whatever your belief is, whether it's in you know spirit guides, angels. Um, you know, for me, it's it's working with my brothers who are both in spirit and my father-in-law, and now even you know my uh, late. Uh, cat that we had to help transition into spirit just two weeks ago at the young age of four. I'm already having interactions with him in the, you know, the spirit world uh, because he's still around me. He's just in a different, um, you know, a different form of energy, just like water can transition from an ice cube to steam to running water, but it's all the same same elements and it's, they all three feel different. So um, it's, it's very cool. Once you start to pay attention in your life and you start to what we call uh, awaken or you start to have awareness and you can do that by asking, you know, the spirit world, God, uh, you know, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, um, 
you know whatever your belief is like i said for me it's those people that are you know had a um that i had a relationship here in the physical world that are now in the spiritual world that come to me all the time and they send us signs and symbols and they let us know of their presence they do let us know that their energy and vibration is all around all around us so what I like to say is when the spirit world, we all, what we would call incarnate, um, that, that is those of us that are in the earth plane. We're what's called incarnate or in the physical flesh form. How do we interpret the meaning of signs that are being shown to us from those that we call discarnate or not having a physical body, not having vocal cords to speak to us? How, how do we interpret that? How do we interpret what they're saying through these signs and synchronicities and symbols? Um, some signs are obvious. Um, uh, you know, you can actually hear, you know, spirit, actually hear a voice like I heard a voice. You might see an actual spirit. Um, I've been doing this work for about eight years now as a professional, and I can say I've only – I can count less – I can count the numbers on my hands less than five times that I've actually seen a physical spirit with my physical eyes. It's more of an impression. It's more of a feeling. It's more of you know, maybe hearing something or seeing something out of the corner of your eye. They're very uh, classic at getting something out of your peripheral vision just enough that you'll turn your head uh, to let you know that they're always around us. And again, they're around us all the time um, because you know time is irrelevant to them. Um, you know, people say, "Well, do they see me in the shower? And do they see what I'm doing?" They see everything that we're doing, but again, these are earthbound um, behaviors, and they don't really, you know, tie into and care about seeing you in the shower. It's, it's not. It, it's kind of a relative, uh, you know, irrelevant that they're looking at you in the shower. So, I, you know, it's just funny what we think. But they're just there to guide us and to help us along. And again, they can come in very obvious, loud and clear. I'm hearing you loud and clear. Why other signs may come across very subtle in nature. Um, but the one thing that I found to be for sure is that signs and synchronicities are intrinsically linked with much synergy and flow between our world and the spirit world. Uh, a lot of times I've found that they like to leave, whether it's your spirit guides or, you know, for me, it's it's my family members on the other side. They like to leave a, a trail of very subtle clues that, for me, sometimes aren't easy to decipher. And like I was telling you earlier, Charlie Chaplin says, we think too much and feel too little. The first thing that we want to do is try to make sense of the sign or the symbol that we're seeing. And, you know, whether it's uh, metaphorical or, you know, symbolic in nature um, – Symbols speak to us at our subconscious mind, and they hold great uh, potency and power to how they're trying to connect with us. But again, we try to get into you know what is the meaning, and sometimes the meaning is not going to happen right at that moment, and the symbol will have um, you know no meaning. But then a day later, you'll be like, "That's why I was seeing what I I was seeing." So um, the metaphor, the metaphor, metaphorical representations um, of symbols are the building blocks of the universe. Um, you can a lot of times see it from the um, Masonic symbol, which is a compass, a compass and a square. Um, you know the tools needed to construct sacred geometry. Those are through symbols. We see symbols all around. Sometimes you don't know what they mean. If you even just look at the, if you if ever looked at U.S. currency on the back, we have the all-seeing eye and, and different symbols. And so a lot of times when the spirit world is coming to us, again it's very subtle, but we'll feel something. We may see something, hear something, taste something. Um, we call these the clairs. They're all sorts of different uh, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience, and they allow us to uh, tune in. But you got to come back to the first step, and that is: Are we paying attention in our life? Um, you know, when I go to work, I see people on the bus, and they're just into their their smartphones, and they're not paying attention to their surroundings, um, and you know, very robotic. And part of your spiritual path is that awakening. And once you become awake, it's very hard to go back to sleep, and you start to notice all the different things around you in life, uh, in nature, interaction with animals like the crow. Um, you you know. Start to see all these different symbols, trying to find meaning of what they are, and then just certain impressions. And then that's where the synchronicities start to line up. But again, try and don't try to analyze them. Just kind of let them come in. Uh, again, you may see a sign prematurely, and um, you know you try to analyze it, and it only gets in the way of the message itself, and you'll drive yourself nuts trying to figure it out. Um, so one of the quotes that I love from a movie called uh, Cloud Atlas 
is from uh, an actor that was in uh, Cloud Atlas, Rob, Robert Frobisher, and he talks about our lives are not our own. From womb to tomb, we are bound to others, past and present, and by each crime and every kindness, we birth our future. I believe there is another world waiting for us, a better one, and I'll be waiting for you there. And that's from the movie Cloud Atlas, one of my favorite movies, uh, because I do believe that the spirit world is not only waiting for us, but they blend with our physical world to help guide us, and they do that again through signs, symbols, synchronicities, and – We'll talk about spiritual awakening for the the second half of the show, Uh, and I'm going to give you some tips, uh, but I want to get to a question here real quick before we go to our second break. And let's see here. This is coming from Luis from Seattle. I was wondering if I could ask you about whether whether you see any travel plans in my near future. Well, Luis from Seattle. Thank you for your question. We always appreciate our inspired listeners. Um, It's kind of subjective because you're always traveling. You're always moving forward. So yes, I do see travel plans for you. If you want to get into specific travel plans, um, there is a warm weather um, hit coming up for that question as far as I don't know if that's going to be uh, someplace here in the United States, whether that's Las Vegas or um, Hawaii or Mexico, but there is a lot of sun. I feel like you are craving uh, to get out into the sun, and uh, just you know, especially if you're in Seattle, we've had a lot of rain, and this is our first nice week of, uh, of it being in the 70s. So yes, you do have travel coming up, but again, you're always traveling. Every day you should be moving and traveling to somewhere new, moving forward. You don't have to go fast, but you do have to go. So um, thank you for that question. If you have more questions, uh, like I said, feel free to head over to Inspired Living Radio Facebook page. Post your question there, and I'll do my best to try to bring them live to air. So there is the whistle. We will uh, head into break. We'll be back in two minutes. You're listening to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Home Times Radio. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on The Irreverent Therapist Show. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. 
Dare to Live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim. So glad you're joining us today on Wisdom Wednesday. A little bit different format for the show today. We are actually doing, or I should say I am doing a teaching class on signs, symbols, and synchronicities when working with spirit. Uh, there have been a few more questions that have come into the uh, Facebook page. Again, if you want to interact with the show right now, head on over to Inspired Living Radio on Facebook. Post your question there, and I'm going to do my best to get them live to air. Uh, one does have to do uh, talking about dreams, and uh, we'll uh, bring that question here uh, shortly. And But I wanted to go back before we went to the break. Um, we were talking about uh, paying attention in our life, but before we get into the actual uh, meat and potatoes of this show, I wanted to um, talk about the Happiness Road Tour. It's our official sponsor for the second half of Inspired Living Radio. And what is the Happiness Road Tour? What it is, it's a road. Uh, the Happiness Road Tour is a movement that is dedicated to spreading the happy across every major city in the U.S. The Happiness Tour first stops in New York City with an evening of inspiration, entertainment, and meaningful connection that will help spread happiness. Choose happy. You can visit them at happinessroadtour.com to join today. And again, that is a uh, one of the team sponsors of Inspired Living Radio, and we thank you for being a part of the show. Check out uh, happinessroadtour.com. Uh, the first one will be kicking off in May in New York City, and it sounds like a lot of fun. We're going to be working with Kita, uh, the founder of Happiness Road Tour, to bring that to Seattle and also down to Los Angeles because we are all looking for a little bit of uh, happiness, right? So before the break, I was talking about paying attention to our life and not always trying to overthink or analyze when we start to see the signs and the symbols and the synchronicities that start to take place uh, within our life. So a lot of time, your logical brain will make no sense of a message that, that's delivered by spirit. Again, the logical mind uh, is the left side of the brain, the creative um, being open part of the mind is on the right side of the brain. Einstein talked a lot about this, is about the, the difference between the, the different parts of the brain. So when this happens, this is where your intuition is going to come into play. Um, and what we call for the intuitive mind will always discern the true meaning of a sign. Uh, intuition in itself doesn't follow a logical thought process. And a lot of times with my clients, when they ask me a question, I'll ask them, Trust your gut. What does your gut tell you? And you know why do we even use that term, trust your gut? Because that's one of your major chakra points, the solar plexus chakra, which is just a few fingers above the, your belly button, your connection to how you even came into this world. It's your radar system to life. And I can't tell you how many times my clients would say, I, it didn't feel right. I should have trusted what I was feeling, but I didn't, and I moved forward in a different uh, way. I made a different decision, and I – you know learned a lot from that or I regretted that. Uh, But a lot of times intuition um, is very separate from the mindset. It doesn't follow that logical thought process like the mind wants to do a step-by-step. It just simply knows what it knows with no reason to explain why. It's likely the message will make no immediate sense or it may make perfect uh, nonsense to you. Uh, but don't be all, at all surprised if everyone else concludes that you are nuts after all. Um, when I first started doing this work and I would you know, be working with a client and I would get a symbol in my mind, what we would call um, clairvoyance, or I would be feeling something clairsentience, and it made no sense to me. 
but you learn to give what you get in doing this work. And I would just, you know, start to explain what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what I'm hearing, et cetera, et cetera. And it would make perfect sense to the person I was reading for and consulting with. And, um, you know, that's that intuitive, you know, not following that, uh, that logical uh, thought process. And so if you are starting to see signs and symbols and synchronicities and whether you feel them, see them, you see uh, something over and over consistently, start to see what your intuition is telling you, what you're feeling. Does that feel right? Um, do, does a, a loved one that you haven't thought about in years just pop right into your mind? Um, you know, for me, I, I have it all the time where somebody I haven't thought about um, just – just will pop into my mind, and I will acknowledge that as an interaction with spirit because I haven't thought about them. There was no reason to think about them. That's just them letting me know that they're still here around us, guiding us, helping us, loving us. Um, I did want to share a cool story uh, with my um, my furry my furry friend Finnegan that we had to help transition to spirit two weeks ago. Um, every night around ten o'clock at night. We go to the top of the stairs and we listen, and you can actually hear him eating out of his bowl just like he used to. We can actually hear the signs, and we actually talk to him, and he actually interacts with us. Uh, we get, it sounds like he's jumping up on a chair, and trust me, the analytical mind, I've tried to debunk this. Like is there something in the kitchen that would make this sound? Um, I've gone down to look to hear if I can see anything, um, but it's just this very subtle way of letting him know that he's still around us. Um, you know, even if it's as simple as eating out of his uh, his bowl. So, you know, those are little signs, but just don't drive yourself nuts by, you know, trying to analyze the meaning of what spirit has given to you. It'll all come in time. A little patient, is, a little patience is required in do, in doing this, and uh, letting go of wanting to know and remain open and continue on your way. The answers, the answers will emerge for you, I promise. And like I said, it becomes almost comical when you start to see all these signs and uh, symbols. Um, so again, pay attention. Start to notice when you run into people unexpectedly. Um, you know, really listen to what's being said in the conversation. If there's any kind of hidden messages that might pop up for you, um, you know, start to you know just relax, uh, knowing that nothing is in control. Um, the, the the wise instructors actually teach us that that you know nothing's in control except what we what we uh, you know do for our thoughts and how we uh, respond to our thoughts. Um, and that's really how you respond to life. So don't forget to breathe. That's important. A lot of us, uh, you know, shallow breathe. That's very important to have good, um, deep breathing. Uh, start a journal. Um, start recording your um, events as they happen. Um, and a good example is a dream journal. I keep a dream journal because I dream uh, exclusively every single night. And when I get up, I write things down. Um, Sometimes they don't have any meaning. Um, sometimes they have perfect meaning. And I had an interaction, you know, with my brother just the other night. That's in spirit, and I wasn't good enough to sing karaoke with him. So, um, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean anything? No, it's just an interaction saying that he's still around, singing, you know, in spirit. So, you know, of course, have belief and trust in what you're picking up. Um, that's very important. It's it's what we call divine nudges are possible. So uh, obviously a positive attitude uh, enhances the experience just as a negative attitude will shut it all down. So uh, belief and trust are very important. Um, again, record whether it's in a book or – um, you know, do with the the technology we have today on your smartphone. Uh, do a voice recorder and just wake up and, and record how you feel. Uh, you know, I use the PEMS technique, which is P-E-M-S, which stands for how do I feel physically, how do I feel emotionally, how do I feel mentally, and how do I feel spiritually. And I look at all four aspects of my um, my body for that day as I'm waking up and record how I'm feeling. So. And if you have a you know if you have a question or a problem, don't uh, be afraid to ask. You know the divine source, your spirit, um, your angels, your guides, your ascended masters, whatever is important to you. Don't forget to ask them and be specific for what you want. Um, a lot of times when I'm working with clients, I'll say, "Well, did you ask?" And they'll be like, "No." And I'm like, "Well, then how do you expect an answer if you if you don't know how to ask the question?" So be specific when you're asking for signs and symbols and synchronicities. So um, want to get to my next question here because time is just flying by. Wow. Um, before we go to our uh, final break, and uh, hello, Claire, in the uh, United Kingdom. I love London, love going over to England and visiting Arthur Finley College uh, 
every single year, or what we call Hogwarts, to learn more about this work and working with spirit. Um, Claire wanted to know, how do we know whether our dreams are just sub- our subconscious making sense of the day or whether they are messages from spirit? So what's fascinating uh, that I've you know um, learned about dreams, Claire, is the mind, when we're asleep doing absolutely nothing, the mind is more active – asleep than it is awake. Many um, science studies they've done, sleep studies, and it's firing at all different points. So um, our subconscious, for us to try to make sense of that, it's really not our subconscious because our everything is shut down. We're not moving, but yet the brain is engaging in something other um, you know, we call it astro travel or um, connecting to spirit. But I've always been fascinated with the dreamscape. And some of your uh, most famous psychic mediums, um, Edgar Casey comes to mind, was a sleep prophet. And he would actually give his readings through sleep. He would talk and somebody would write down what he was dreaming of. So um, I try not to get into the subconscious and making sense. Again, that goes back to we think too much and feel too little. I would start to feel into what your dreams are saying. Write them down because a lot of times when we wake up, within the first five minutes when we, of putting our feet on the ground, we've lost 50% of our dreamscape. And so it's important to write it first thing uh, before you put your feet on the ground in a journal or just record what your dreams are. And again, just be open to what the messages are without trying to analyze everything because, again, we want to try to analyze. And then watch throughout the day to see what signs, symbols, and synchronicities are happening, whether it's an interaction with uh, uh, a nature or you keep hearing the same thing or you keep seeing the same time and uh, just kind of watch that and journal it and see what those messages are. Um, It's interesting. uh, Claire said also that the crow moon in Libra came in on March 23rd. So astrology comes into play. Uh, Thelma was asking what was the crow uh, omen of what she was on, uh, what she was seeing. And the crow is actually an omen of change. So uh, thank you, Claire, for that um, additional information. Uh, that's what's awesome about doing this work is um, we start interacting with one another and, and talking about crows and dreams and signs and symbols and synchronicities. So um, that's the sound to go into our last break. Uh, we're going to take two more minutes and then we'll be back to wrap up the signs, symbols, and synchronicities of working with spirit. This is Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on Home Times Radio. Stay tuned. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the the inspired and and the inspiration. inspiration. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. mediumship messages and musings explores mediumship and all things metaphysical lisa phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world 
She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your hosts on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times. We do appreciate all the questions that are pouring in. Uh, Claire, thank you for your question coming all the way from uh, the UK. Uh, we really appreciate you listening in. Uh, there's another question uh, that I just got messaged. I'll get to that as we uh, move along in the last section of the show. Uh, one uh, question was asking, what kind of symbols do we see? And... Uh, that can range. That's very uh, – that's, you know, you can see all sorts of symbols. I would actually start to look for repeated symbols. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear people uh, talking about – they always see you know, time. You know, we're the only species that measures our life by time. No other species on earth does that. And people say they see numbers. I work with numerology a lot. And so numbers are a great way of uh, you know, how spirit will interact with us. People say all the time that they see the number 1111, um, 333. Uh, for me, I always seem to wake up very early in the morning at 333. It, just dri- it drives me nuts for years. Why am I waking up at 333? Um, that's a whole nother show for getting into the numbers. Uh, but for um, the question on what types of symbols, it really ranges based on your database of information, what's important to you. Um, and if you're seeing them consistently through the day or you're hearing them um, in conversation. So um, if you feel a certain lack of you know, synchronicities or signs that are occurring in your present life, what you can do is you can create opportunities for them. One of my favorite things to do is to randomly open a book at a page and read the first sentence I see. Um, this works particularly well if I'm relaxed, I'm in a meditative state, and it is especially effective if I choose a spiritual or inspiring book. Um, I, I use that a lot. So that's a that's a um, one way to. Uh, you know, become aware. It's important to have meditation in your life. If you don't meditate, I highly recommend it. It's uh, what changed my life. It's what put me on the path of doing the spiritual work that I do here in Seattle. And it is a big reason that I'm even talking to you today on the radio. So meditation, I was listening to Dr. Wayne Dyer, the late great Dr. Wayne Dyer, just the other day, and he was talking about uh, music and that the what makes music music, and I was talking to a friend about this, is the space, the silence behind each note. Because music is not music if there's not a silence behind each note. Otherwise, it's just a continuous long vibration or a sound. So it's important to have silence behind the notes of your life. And you can accomplish that through uh, meditation. For me, one of the most effective ways to tune in to your spirit allies and to start you know, embracing these uh, signs, symbols, and synchronicities is to get out and connect with nature. Uh, if you live in the city like I do here in Seattle, um, that's why I do spiritual hikes. It's important to get out in nature. We're going to do a waterfall. Um, you know, go visit a countryside. Go out and take a nice walk. Uh, we talked with Mavis Patillo a few weeks ago, and she said what was the thing that really saved her life was a tree that she went by um, and talked to every day and put her hands on it. And you know, it, you know, to some that are listening to this, it might seem childish. Uh, to go out and touch a tree, but I tell you what, there's a lot of power in nature, and nature is our greatest teacher. Uh, so get out in nature if you really want to start connecting what is unseen and be able to feel versus think on um, all these signs, symbols, and synchronicities that are uh, you know in your life every single day. Um, walk with the intent to remain open and observant to the signs around you. Um, heed what you encounter on your journey and how you feel. Uh, messages will come in a, a, a t- many different ways. Um, you know, for example, through a person, an animal, a tree, cloud formations. If you ever, you know, done that where you laid on your back and looked up at the clouds, especially on a day like today, what's going to be 70 degrees, I might just go out and do this, land my back and look at the clouds and, and see what the clouds, you know, form. Animals, messages. Um, 
and you know just the mysteries of how magical life really is for all of us. Um, again, it is human nature to seek answers and explanations, uh, you know, for what is going on in our life. But it's also prudent to remember and be graceful to accept some things will always remain a mystery, and that's okay. While others may become clear in time, just be patient with yourself. But again, it comes back to that spiritual awakening and the awareness. Um, one of the things that I would recommend uh, is one of the things that you're going to notice on your spiritual awakening uh, that will allow these synchronicities to start playing a part in your life and allow spirit is to have gratitude every day and be grateful for the opportunities you have today presently. Uh, a lot of times people get so off into the world of the what if world, what if this, what if that, or they're stuck in the, the past world of I should have done this. Um, I should have done that and living with regret. That's not any of the two worlds you want to be. You want to be in today's world. Um, we all get a second chance every single day, and that's called tomorrow. And so you want to live today, and one of the spiritual awakenings that you'll start to notice about yourself is um, you stop worrying about things that you can't control. Um, most of the things that we worry about anyway never happen. Uh, so stop worrying so much. That's going to help you to align to what spirit has to say because you're going to block. Worry is usually fear-based, and it blocks you because you're thinking on the left side of the brain, and then it closes you off to what spirit is trying to tell you. So um, your spiritual awakening will consist of worrying less um, and, and stop worrying about things that most of the time don't even happen anyway. Your interests and desires start to change. Uh, as you begin to awaken, you are more interested in the pursuit of knowledge, wisdom, and experience. Um, you know, going out and getting hammered every weekend, you know, stops, you know, being appealing to you and the way you use and spend your spare time, you know, now seem useless and redundant. So, you know, whether it's video games or, you know, cable TV or, uh, news or Netflix, you know, they just seem redundant when you realize that there is a world of potential that resides within you and around you. And that is through the spirit world. So that's part of your spiritual awakening. So again, be patient with yourself. Um, and then this is where we, you know, this is where the true magic happen. This is where we start to see synchronicities in life. Um, we start to see many coincidences appear in our life. These coincidences have profound meaning. And the probability of these things occurring are so small that they can't be attributed to mere chance. Trust me, I've, I've had this conversation many times with myself. I'm like, what are the chances? What are the statistics of this happening? Um, but pay attention to them as they are a sign that you are on the right track. When your energy, thoughts, and emotions are aligned with the flow of the universe, it begins to work in your favor. You know, there is a lot of truth to like attracts like. There is power in energy, frequency, and vibration. When you stop working against it, it stops working against you. So work in flow um, with the universe, with the spirit world, with your spirit guides, your angels, your ascended masters, whatever it is for you. So the importance, again, coming back to meditation is very, very important. Again, the silence behind the musical notes. Um, you know, start to look for your symbols, whatever those symbols are. You know, they could be the numbers that we talked about, movie references, conversations that you're having with just random people, uh, phrasing, phrases or sayings from um, a song. You keep hearing a particular song. That happens to me a lot is the same song. I'll turn on the radio and I'll be like, really? That's what I'm hearing. Um, you know, somebody that you haven't thought about just pops up in your mind. Um, these are all the signs and synch synchronicities and all they are really – um, the point of the show is that they're signposts and mile markers guiding and directing you and helping you align to your personal growth, your transformation, and connecting to yourself, others, and the world around you. So I, I, I would encourage you to uh, take notice when you're being sent these signs, these signals, people, patterns, books, articles – you know everything that you know is it's happening into your life, and think of them as little gifts from, from spirit. Um, these little special gifts help direct you on your path towards your goals. So it's important to set goals, and then visualize and manifest what you want, and then look for the signs. Um, they also help you follow your soul's guidance. And we'll be talking with Barbara DeAngelis here in a few weeks, talking about soul shifts. Great book. I'm reading it right now. Highly recommend it. But you know, all you really have to do is to breathe. Become aware of what's going on around you. Ask. Be watchful after you ask the question and see what spirit gives back to you. They may come in loud and clear or they may be very subtle. 
And again, I, I promise the universe will be knocking on your door once you become uh, awakened and aware to what's going on around you. So um, I just wanted to finish up with the uh, Chinese proverb that I've always found, um, you know, inspiring. And it's a bird does not sing because it has an answer. It sing it sings because it has a song. So again, get out there, find your song, uh, look for all the different interactions um, and symbols, you know, hug a tree, get out in nature, go to a waterfall, read a book, do what I do. Sometimes just open up a random, a good book and see what the words in the book are saying to you. And I'm going to wrap up the show. We have a couple minutes here before we wrap up. But Denise wants to talk about um, what types of symbols spirit uses. Um getting pretty specific signs pushing you towards making a change, does this mean you have to do it? Uh, Denise, thanks for the question. No, it doesn't mean you have to do it. The power that we have as uh, in, incarnate human beings in the in the flesh is the, the power of choice and free will, and that is what allows us to you know move forward. I, I always tell my clients there is no right, wrong, bad, happy – sad or good there just is and we're here uh to learn this is our classroom so you do have um a a choice you don't you know have to listen to the signs but you know it's kind of like the same in way of driving if you're not paying attention to the signs that are ahead of you you know dead end cliff ahead u-turn uh you don't have to pay attention to those signs you don't have to pay attention to this you know what the speed limit is but through that that's where we run into trouble. And um, so pay attention to the signs, pay attention to the symbols, watch for all the synchronicities. Uh, it's been my pleasure today just to talk with you. Thank you for all the great uh, questions. Uh, didn't get a chance to get to all of them, but thank you so much for listening in. Like I said, next week I'll be back uh, with Deborah King, a uh, best selling author, and we're going to be talking to uh, some pretty uh, spiritually awesome stuff. So until then, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Have a great week and look for those signs, symbols, and synchronicities. Namaste.